Greetings to those who watch below. What better thing to have on a cold, dark autumn night than some true paranormal stories? Number 1 My nan has a very good friend she has known since her nursing days, and back when they both had their kids and had grown into women, my friend's ex-husband rang up my nan. He was very depressed and needed somebody to talk to, but my nan had to say that unfortunately she couldn't go over to see him as she had just had a newborn, my father, and was breastfeeding and needed to feed. He said that he understood, and then said, I'll see you soon then. My granddad was on nights at work at the time, so she wasn't expecting anybody home or to visit until the next morning. At about 9pm that night, she heard her front gate open. It was a very vocal gate. She liked it that way, so that when she was alone, she knew when someone walked up to the house. She assumed that maybe Grandad had been sent home, or forgot something, so thought nothing of it. That was until the family dog, Ben, began to stiffen up and growl towards the front door, and nobody opened it. He began to bark. Nan insists that he had never been like that. He was a dog that had been brought up around four youngsters, placid, patient and kind. She tried to get up to open the front door to see if some kids were playing around with her, but she couldn't. She was frozen in place on her chair. She said she felt icy cold for about two minutes. The fire was blaring. Nan described that after the cold began to fade, she felt very calm and serene and heard the front gate go once more. In the morning when Grandad returned home, she explained to him what had happened and at what time. He told her he had some terrible news. Her friend's ex-husband had committed suicide at about 8.50pm that evening. It took about 10 minutes to walk from my nan's house to his. Number 2 I lived in a house from hell for 4 years. From age 11 to almost 16. There was constantly something happening. Doors flying open and shut, voices, footsteps. Nothing ever stayed where you put it. I was alone there a lot because both my parents worked and I was constantly terrified. One of the most gut level disturbing things though was the little girl in my bathroom. Every time I walked past my bathroom door, which was constantly since it was right outside my bedroom, I saw a little girl with blonde curled hair and a rose-coloured dress. She just stood there, staring, looking like a photograph from 1905. I started keeping the door closed so I could walk by without seeing her, but she was always there when I opened it. Once I stepped in past her, I couldn't see her anymore, but I could feel her there. She scared me, but I felt really sorry for her because she was trapped there, just like me probably forever. As the years went by and things in the house continued to get worse, she started seeming darker. I started feeling like she wasn't really a little girl. I knew there was something ugly in the house and I felt like it was presenting this sympathetic image to me. Then I started thinking I was completely losing my mind. One day, when I was 14, I had a friend from out of town come and stay with me for a week. I hadn't told her anything whatsoever about the house because I didn't think she would come if I did. Right after she got there, we were sitting in my room and she left to go to the bathroom. About a minute later, she walked back in with a puzzled look on her face and said, So there's a little girl in your bathroom? Uh, yeah, she hangs out in there. Blonde hair? Curls? Pink dress? Yeah. You know that's not really a little girl, don't you? I almost threw up. I was so relieved and terrified and excited and ready to run out of the house screaming. She wouldn't use my bathroom the rest of the week, and I started using it as little as possible without pissing off my parents, who didn't want to believe. Eventually, we moved out, and I couldn't have been happier. I distanced myself from it mentally as much as I could, Then, when I was 18, I took another friend on a road trip to pack up a few things I'd left in the house. 
my parents hadn't managed to sell it by then and wouldn't do for five more years. The minute we got on the property, my friend seemed uncomfortable. When we came around the bend in the long steep driveway, he went completely white. I could tell something was wrong, but he insisted he was okay, so we got to work. After a while, he asked to use the bathroom, and I directed him to mine. Not twenty seconds after he left, he came running back in, gasping for breath, and slammed the bedroom door behind him. He started babbling about a little blonde girl who wasn't really a girl. All of a sudden, he went dead still, looked me in the eye, and very solemnly said, She's not happy with you. You left, and you weren't supposed to. We threw whatever we could grab in two trips in my car, and got the fuck out at top speed. Number 3 When I was about 8 or 9, we lived in a house that my father built for us in the middle of nowhere, Indiana. My parents owned a small business that often brought clients to our remote little homestead, and over the years we met some rather odd people. One such person was a strange man that gave me the heebie-jeebies as soon as I saw him. He arrived at our home in a black car with tinted windows, wearing all black, with a black hat and dark sunglasses. His demeanour was very strange, and he was very interested in our black Persian cat named Mercedes. Nevertheless, he left after his consultation with my parents, but later at dinner, everyone admitted that he had set them on edge. That night, Mercedes came down very ill. A few days later, an illness the local vet couldn't diagnose that included the cat vomiting up gobs of what appeared to be black tar, Mercedes died. In her final moments, she would swat and hiss at something in the air. I never forget the chill I got when she took her last breath. After this, many strange things began happening around our home. We'd find footprints in the snow that started and stopped out of nowhere. Noises in the middle of the night. The wallpaper would be torn halfway off the walls. My mother, who has always been somewhat of a sensitive person, claimed to start seeing demonic creatures around the house and became rather withdrawn. I had asthma, but it had been a long time since I'd had an attack. Soon after all this began happening, I started having episodes again. I was very sick one night so I slept on the floor next to my mother's side of the bed in my parents' bedroom. Under their bed and around there were a bunch of boxes, family photos, wrapping paper, things that we'd been meaning to store elsewhere. In the middle of the night, I had a particularly bad asthma attack. I heard my mother wake up screaming, get away from her, and trying to get to me. Every box from under the bed and around the room had been stacked between where I lay on the floor and my mother's side of the bed, preventing her from getting to me. She finally reached me and gave me my inhaler, and she cried all night. She never told me what she saw that night, but strange things continued to happen for several more months. We had the house blessed and tried everything we could. Eventually, the activity started to slow. My brother and his family live in the house now, and they hear unexplainable sounds every so often, but nothing like what happened that winter. I grew up to be quite a sceptic, but I still can't explain what happened that year. I just tell myself it was all in our heads. Number 4 In my old apartment, my dog would, on occasion, look down the hallway towards the bedroom from the living room and growl for no apparent reason. Also on occasion, when I was sleeping in the bedroom and she slept at the foot of the bed, I would wake up with her staring intently at the door and growling. She was a big girl, 140 pounds of Great Dane, Catahoula and Slobber. So I'm there for a couple of years of this, thinking okay, my dog has a good imagination. Wrong. One night I woke up, due not to my dog growling, but barking for all she was worth, and not at the door. She was barking straight at me. I opened my eyes pretty much immediately, and there was a blur of light, leaning over me, very close. 
certainly less than six inches from my face. It was not distinguishable as a person, it more resembled a person-sized version of a colourful nebula that you might see a picture of in a science magazine, three-dimensional and all. I immediately got the distinct impression that this thing had been watching me sleep for God knows how long, and how many times before. For all the clarity of that distinct feeling, I had no sense of what it wanted, whether it was malevolent or just curious. I flipped right the fuck out, jumped backwards to the other side of the bed, too terrified to scream, and that blur of light receded and disappeared over the course of about three seconds. My dog was still going absolutely eight. Shortly thereafter, I asked the building manager if anybody had ever died in my apartment. She investigated, and came back to me a couple of weeks later with a yes. A woman had died of a drug overdose of that apartment in 1995, shortly after having her child removed from her custody because of her addiction problems. My dog did still growl at the hallway from time to time, but I never saw it again. I moved out about a year later. Number 5. This was several years ago, when I was a total deadbeat and lived with my then girlfriend's parents. They had a tri-level house, with a basement that contained our living space and mine and my girlfriend's bedroom. Upstairs was the living space for everybody else, the dining room and kitchen. The third level had the master bedroom and two additional rooms for my girlfriend's sisters. I was home alone one night with her parents off with friends, my girlfriend at one of her friends, and her sisters were an all-night church thing. I elected to stay home and play World of Warcraft all night. Where my computer and desk sat, right above my head, was an AC vent. Often, I could hear one of her sisters playing in her room from that vent. I was levelling my paladin or something, when I heard laughing and giggling coming from the vent. Nobody was supposed to be home, so my heart picked up. I glanced at the clock on my computer, and it read 1.36am. I remember this all very distinctly. I went to go investigate, and headed upstairs. The way the landing sits at the top of the stairs is so that you can turn left and either go upstairs or go into the kitchen. I climbed the second set of stairs and opened the first door on the left, which was her young sister's room. This is directly above the basement. Inside, I used the light of my phone to illuminate as best as I could. I saw a small figure, what I assumed was a small girl, wrapped in a white sheet in the centre of the room. Cue pants shitting. This figure, this young girl, stops playing with the dolls and looks at me. It let out the most ear-shattering scream you can imagine. My skin crawls just thinking about it, and my chest tightens just remembering it. I wish I could tell you what transpired, but I remember waking at the bottom of the landing, right next to the door of the kitchen. I stumbled into the kitchen to get a drink of water and contemplate what the fuck just happened. I glanced at the clock on the microwave. The clock read 4.46 a.m. We never found the sheet the next day, but the dolls the figure was playing with were sitting in the middle of the room, away from the toy chest which they were inside of that afternoon, when my girlfriend's sister cleaned her room. Hi guys, Brimstone here. Hope you enjoyed today's stories. I always love doing paranormal ones as it's such a passion of mine. If you did like the video, please remember to like, share, comment and subscribe, it always helps the channel out. If you have a story that you want to share with me, please feel free to send it in and I would love to have a look at it. Also, Halloween is nearly upon us, as is my special. You may have seen the teaser that I put out there. There is going to be five nights of Halloween creepiness. I can't wait for it, and I know that you guys probably can't either. So, until next time... Sleep tight.